everyone, it's Daniel Matilda here again. Welcome to this episode of Life for Kingdom Living. In the last episode, I started introducing to you the subject of power, which is the teaching that I did in the Sanctuary of Kingdom Faith Ministers International. Again, you can see in my hands my latest book, God's Redemption Buffet, in which the Lord um, showed me some things in His Word based on Revelation chapter 5 verse 12 and the importance of us as the children of God laying hold of what he's already paid to make available for us. You know, one of the interesting things about a buffet is that you pay one price, one fee, take it, whatever it is, and then you get to go in and eat whatever you want from the table. Well, in this series of messages of which power is one of them, you're going to be learning about the things on God's redemption buffet table. I want you to listen to the second part of the message power, and I pray that it will tremendously bless you. Jesus said, guys, listen, tarry here in Jerusalem. Don't get excited and start trying to do ministry because you ain't got something that is very crucial. Don't be in a hurry. You go do your own card. You go make a name for yourself. You just want to do ministry. Say, no, stay here until you are endured with power from on high. In other words, Jesus was saying, you need power to do ministry. But this is how it's going to come. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit baptizes you, and of course, many of us have read Acts chapter 2 and we've seen what happened on the day of Pentecost. How the Holy Spirit came into the room in a dramatic fashion. And this 120 were baptized and they were instantly empowered. One moment, they were still hiding away after what happened to Jesus. How the Sanhedrin and the high priest picked him up and crucified him. They even lacked courage and boldness to come out in public. Next minute, they received the power of the Holy Ghost. Now Peter steps out. Same guy who had denied Jesus three times. Now he steps out. This, and not drunken as you suppose, but this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He speaks boldly. Why? He's now empowered with the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, for the 21st century born-again Christian, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not optional. If you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are at the risk of a Christian life without power. Jesus did not do any ministry, at least not on record. We, we hear of when he was 12 years old and he was in the temple, you know, dialoguing with uh, uh, the, the elders in the temple in the world. But there's no record anywhere in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John of Jesus doing anything until the Holy Spirit came upon him in Jordan. You're going to cry out for it. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you must hunger for it so that as soon as the opportunity arises, you receive it. And if you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you've kind of been living a life now where it's like, mm, yeah, I just really, you know, that's, that kind of stuff is for Pastor Dalil and Pastor Ruth. I'm just a businessman or I'm just a, a corporate guy. Please repent, change your mind because every day you will fight battles. And you need power to defend yourself, power to defend your marriage, power to defend your children, power to defend your finances. Do you know that there are devils and demons that are assigned to try and make you broke? They will come against your business. They will come against your church. They will look for ways to strip you of what you have. And if God's power does not defend you, you will just get depressed. Run to him when you see the sign of the devourer. If I start noticing anything funny going on with my finances, like bank balances are getting too low, I get on my knees. Ah, Lord, this is not supposed to be like that. Have I made some wrong steps? Am I making foolish decisions? Am I overspending? I go back to my source and I seek his face. I repent where I need to repent and then I ask for his power. Those who don't know him, they jump off the river Thames. People in the Far East, particularly Japan, they said when companies 
lose a lot of money, they always have to watch the CEOs because they jump out of the buildings. As a matter of fact, they say it's a thing of honor that, well, if this company is going down, I'm going to go down with you, stupid, dumb, dumb. You don't go down with a company. Where there's life, there's hope. Company go down, let the company go down. Something is hemorrhaging, don't hold on to it and let it drag you into the ground. Know when it's wise to cut your losses and say, all right, I lost this time, but I'm going to rebuild, I'm going to bounce back again. But I said all of that to say to you, when you have the Holy Spirit, he is the source of power. Acknowledge him when you pray every day, which takes me to my number two statement or a way to get it is obedience and holiness obedience and holiness in john chapter 9 verse 4 if you're able to open to it very quickly you can do so john writes it says i must walk the walks of him who sent me while it is day that the night is coming when no one can work now he's recording the words of jesus one of the secrets to jesus's power was that he was always doing the will of his father if you are in obedience to god god will back you up god will back you up if you're just doing your own thing god is not obliged to back you up and don't dare try to blackmail god because i've been there I've been there, I've done stuff that I never prayed to God or asked him for his counsel before doing it. And when the thing was not working, and I said, oh God, and I heard a very small, still voice say, I never told you to do that. Let me give you a practical example. The Lord had blessed my wife and I when he called us into ministry, full-time ministry in America in 20, 2004. All he asked us to do was sell one out of six properties he had blessed us with. We sold that one property. We took an equity of about 75 grand and we went over. We put a lot of it down as deposit and bought a house in America. And then I had this nice, brilliant idea. I'm not going to take any salary for the next two, three years. So I had a house in Manchester. I sold it and took the equity and put it in the bank in America. I said, okay, we will leave on this while we serve God zeal without wisdom we're, we're just, i don't care about money i mean it was so bad we had a couple of tenants who were not paid i told my brother i said just leave the key by the door i don't care about money people are going to hell i said i don't care dumb dumb and we cut long story short i was about to sell the third property and one day i said to the lord i said i kind of won't believe you're stripping me of everything you gave me because i'm serving you and I heard that small voice again said, you dumb dumb, I never told you to give up anything. <laughs> it was just lack of wisdom. I committed intellectual suicide. I used to be very sharp. I was in an investment club. We bought shares, we sold shares. I even forgot how to log in to check shares. I, I forgot about it. I was serving God. I don't care about anything anymore. All I care about is God. I didn't realize that one day there will be school fees to pay. Are you with me? When you do stuff in obedience to God, God will back you up. And that's why God backs us up when we're doing ministry. And the ministry he asked us to do. What he asked you to do. One day I was in Liberia. The last night of our crusade meeting, open air meeting, there were hundreds of villagers there. God tells me, go teach them about the power of the kingdom of God. I'm boasting about the superiority of the power and so on and so forth. I had no idea that there was a head of the witch doctors was there who had come to test me that night. I didn't know. I did everything that God asked me to do. I found somebody who was deaf and dumb. And I said, hey, this one has been witch. You know, they've done this by witchcraft. I'm going to demonstrate the power of God. God honored it. That woman's mouth opened. She spoke village went wild when we before we left one of the preachers there told me information about this head of witches that was there and then told me that also there's a woman who is very powerful <laughs> that 
the village knows her, that she's a wicked woman. She does a lot of witchcraft, that she was there as well. The next morning I prayed, God, they say there's one more meeting. This is the Sunday morning one. The Lord said, don't go. <laughs> I called the pastor. I said, because now we had two options. There was another church in uh, um, Liberia, Monrovia, about an hour's drive away. The Lord said, go to that one. But don't go back to the village. Your job is done in the village. Now, how many of you know, if I had said, hey, Superman, Daniel, let's go and see what else we're going to do. Let's see who we're going to challenge. And I had gone back to the village. It would be my fault what happens. Because God will only back me up if I'm obedient. But if I'm disobedient, he won't back me up. I used to have friends. When I was pastor in America, some of my pastor friends just love to go to Africa. Anytime they hear of missions in Africa, everybody wants to go. And one day God told me to warn one of my friends. If God didn't ask you to go to Africa, please don't go. The demons there are not sophisticated like the ones here in America. Because some, some of my friends, they had no sense. When they go to Africa, they wouldn't even go into the town. They would go deep, deep in the village. You that your prayer life is weak. Mr. Pastor, you know how to teach nice messages. You are charismatic. But truth be told, you don't pray up to one hour a day. And you now go into deep villages where there's some, some Sangomas that are waiting. And God didn't ask you to go. Then they come back to America. They're sick. They have malaria. They have all kinds of things. And I say, well, I told you. If God didn't ask you to do it, he won't back you up with his power. So very key is this issue of obedience. And also alongside with it is holiness. Holiness, a life that is obedient before God. I don't know about you, but all of my Christian life, every time I did something wrong, even before I was a minister, it always made me feel like I lacked confidence. Then if you're somebody who is doing something for God, my first proper ministry assignment was to be a home fellowship leader. This was in 1995, 1996. If I did something wrong, I don't feel powered. I don't feel empowered. I don't know about you. Can you live in sin and still feel anointed? It's not possible. The devil that tempted you to commit the sin is the same one who's going to come back and beat you up with it every day. Satan is nasty. He doesn't play fair. He tricks you to do it by telling you it doesn't really matter. It's okay. Everybody else is doing something. You just don't know what they're doing. You know, this little one, you do yours. And then when you've done it, he then comes back and says, Ah, ah, you shameful, you, you, you want to go to church? You should be ashamed of yourself. Stay away for at least three weeks. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. So obedience and holiness is very key. Let me move on. Number three is effectual fervent prayer. How do you become a powerful believer? Through intimacy with the source of power. Effectual fervent prayer. Somebody say effectual fervent prayer. Now this is not five minutes prayer. I want to make an appeal to all the members of Kingdom Faith Ministers International who do not ever join the morning prayer. Please repent. 6 a.m. prayer is not designed to please Pastor Daniel. 6 a.m. prayer meeting is our spiritual gym every day. That's what it is. Those of us who go to this spiritual gym every day, we begin to build spiritual power. That power is going to work for you. It will work for you to defend your family. It will work for you to defend your finances. When somebody tries to mess with you at work, they start giving you unnecessary stress. You exercise that power in your prayer. When you go to the spiritual gym and you do spiritual exercise, it benefits you. And every time you're praying, all these prayer points for the church, prayer points for Milt Kings, like on Tuesday, most of our prayers every Tuesday for the last five years is for Milt Kings for our region. Don't think, oh yeah, on Tuesday they just pray for Milton Keynes. I don't want that one. Think it's a seed. 
Every time you're sowing the seeds of prayer, you are attracting a harvest of God doing something for you. You know, one day the Spirit of the Lord told me, he said, son, the more you pray for others, the more I will command other people to pray for you. Because what you sow is what you reap. Those who are selfish and think they're the only ones that know how to sleep at 6 o'clock in the morning, how are you going to reap people praying for you when you don't make time to pray for others? I'm very confident of this. All of the people that are part of Prayer 49 that deny themselves of one hour of sleep between midnight and 6 a.m. every day. You guys know what Prayer 49 is. In our church, we cover those 49 hours of prayer. One person takes on an hour prayer slot and prays for the church while the rest of us are sleeping. 12 midnight shift, 1 a.m. shift, 2 a.m. shift, 3 a.m. shift. I am part of the WhatsApp group. I see them sometimes when they sign in, when they sign out. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night because I hear uh, uh, the, the notification. And my heart is praying for those people that thank you for covering us in Kingdom Faith Ministries International. It's like watchmen that are taking their shift. You know, in, in a, a, a proper physical army, wherever you're stationed, you have to have men that are on guard at different shifts. And they're on guard for the benefit of the army. So they will sit on the tower and they will watch during their shift. That's what these people are doing. And can you imagine somebody say, I'm part of this army, but I don't ever want to be given a shift. I don't ever want to sacrifice to pray for anybody. So it's a seed. But most importantly, your prayer life helps you to become more intimate with God. And that's where power comes from. God gives power to his children as he sees the need for it. The more you do for God, the more power he gives to you. The less you do for God, the less you need the empowerment of God. God is not going to give you gifts so that you can just show up. Oh, pastor, pastor, pray for me. I want to be prophetic like you. I want to be able to hold people. I see that thing you do. You hold people and then you begin to say things prophetically for them. I want that too. He's not going to give you if you're not willing to really help people and pray for them like that. Oh, pastor, I noticed you pray for the sick and the sick get delivered. He's not going to give you the power to heal the sick if you're never going to pray for the sick. So power comes through effectual, fervent prayer. Look at somebody around you say, you better start joining 6 a.m. prayer. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of them. They're not going to beat you. I believe there are a few slots even in prayer 49. And we set a vision that I'm still hoping to God we can fulfill that by our anniversary at the end of this month, we would launch prayer 72. How many people will believe God with me? You know what prayer 72 is? We start the prayer cover from the second watch. That's 9 p.m. to midnight. But 9 p.m. to midnight, we want that to be for the young believers. Please, those of you who are already doing midnight to 6 a.m., don't give up your shift. You are the senior boys and girls. So you, Because it's sacrifice. Can I be honest with you? It's not much sacrifice to pray at 9 o'clock. Well, for some people, it still is. Some people have their favorite TV show at that time. But it's not the same as the person who has the 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. shift. I, I did a 5 a.m. shift in prayer 49 for quite a while. I would do 5 a.m. shift. I can't remember which two days. I think I did on Sunday and Friday. Why? God said lead by example. Don't set it up and not take shift. So I, I called the dance and she felt like, oh, pastor, you don't need to take shift. I said, no, I even want to. Give me two shifts. But it was kind of easy, though, because I normally wake up at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Confession. And most of the time at 5 o'clock, I'm supposed to be praying for you. But those people who wake up at 2 a.m., they have cut their sleep into half. Don't tell me God is not going to reward them. Don't tell me God is not going to bless them. But most importantly, they will grow in intimacy. In James chapter 5 verse 16, the Bible says, Confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Then he goes on to say, The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. In the Amplified Version, it says the effective heartfelt prayer of a righteous man does what? Anybody? 
makes tremendous power available that is dynamic in its working. You want to be dynamic? Be a man of prayer. Be a woman of prayer. Please, I beg you, don't be a Christian that does not pray. A Christian that does not pray is somebody enlisted in an army that has no ammunition. The first thing that will teach you, even in, in training, the first training when you're a recruit, they will teach you how to handle a gun. We have one of our young daughters in the church who just recently joined the army. And within weeks, she sent me a video of her handling gun and doing the training, how to put it apart and how to put it together. She's been a cute, cute, pretty girl. But she said she wanted to be in the army. And I said, man, by the time this girl comes home, she's going to be tough now. But they're not going to look at her and say, oh, but you're so pretty. You know, you're so cute. Don't, don't hold the gun. You know, the gun is too crude. You don't really want to handle a gun, you know. Just um, uh, let's give you a handbag, you know. Handbag would be nicer. Oh, no. As long as she's going to be in the military, she's going to have to learn how to handle a gun. As long as you're going to be a Christian, whether you pay the price now or you pay the price later, you will surely pay. My mother used to say that to me when I didn't study. She would say, you pay the price now or you pay it later. But for sure, you will surely pay it. So whether you pay the price in advance and you're strengthened and you don't have a lot of crisis or you don't pray and crises follow after crisis, you will still pray. <laughs> when crisis comes, how many people know? <laughs> when some, some stuff starts going wrong in your life, you will pay the price. And by then it will be by fire, by thunder. And number four, this is the last tip I'm going to give you with growing in power, taking this beautiful item off God's redemption buffet table. It's a fasted and consecrated life. Fasted and consecrated life. One of the most significant portions of scripture that talks about the benefit of fasting is Isaiah chapter 58. And in the sixth verse it says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Sometimes when I'm praying about stuff and it's not shifting, the Holy Spirit reminds me, Daniel, have you fasted? And then I realize, ah, that's the turbo that I use to charge my effort. Why do you think we, we just do that in kingdom? And by the way, fasting is coming again in the month of uh, June. Amen. At least we're going to go 21 days. Why? Because we don't want to be sloppy. We, we don't want to get to the place where we are slack. You turbocharge your prayer life. You turbocharge your spiritual life. Every time you deny the flesh. If you want power, you have a fasted and consecrated life. My mentor, Dr. Randy Clark, told me one day, he said, you know, Daniel, I don't fast all the time. Because I, I noticed we're in Brazil, and he ate every meal. He ate every meal. And I'm like, this man is still so anointed. He still gets out there, and he says, Holy Spirit, come. Boom, Holy Spirit comes. Everybody's falling, bam, 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 bam. People are getting healed. All kinds of miracles taking place. I'm like, Daniel never eats before he preaches. <laughs> I feel like I need to strip my flesh back to make myself a bit more sense. Now, it's not a formula. Please don't say that's a, it's not a formula. That's just me. It works for me. It works for me anywhere I go, particularly if I'm invited to speak. I want to be a little bit more, uh, you know, in that denial state. And I, I just feel it works for me. But I see him eat all the time. And then he told me, he said, Daniel, at different seasons in my life, when the power volume was turned up, it was right after I did 40 days of fasting, water only. I said, hmm. The Bible said Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. We think that stuff is a joke. It's called denial. And when you're denying your flesh and you're stripping it back, your spirit man is growing muscles and taking charge. 
Your spirit man is taking space. I remember one day the Lord told me to preach a message on power. And he told me, he said, put two images together. He said, look for an image of someone who looks really muscular and very powerful. You know, displaying the biceps and the triceps like that. And he said, now embed another image of a weak and wimpy man right on the inside. And I showed it to the church in America. I said, this is how many of us men are like. We're macho on the outside, but spiritually, we ain't got no power. We're macho. Hey, do you know who I am? I'm the managing director of. Do you know who I am? I drive a, the latest Mercedes, macho. Or oh, we're even physically macho. I go to the gym six days a week. None of that stuff impresses me. The people that I look at as my heroes, they're the people that on the inside, they're loaded. They may seem very gentle, very quiet on the outside. You seen Dr. Randy Clark? Very gentle on the outside. But there's so much power in there. He prays for people who have metal implants and metal implants disappear. Somebody with two more growth, right before your eyes, two more shrink. And yet he's just very gentle, very simple, doesn't talk big, doesn't act big. I respect those kind of men. I don't respect you because of your car or your house. No. Even people that don't know God can have all of that. But let me hear about your prayer life. Let me hear about how God visits you. Do angels know you? Do they come give you messages regularly? You know, like Daniel? No, I'm not boasting. I'm talking about the Daniel in the Bible. I close with this. Please rise up. No matter what you're called to do for God, you would encounter satanic opposition. Thank you for watching Light for Kingdom Living. Join us in the next episode as we unravel more mysteries of the Kingdom of God. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we would like to hear from you. Please contact us on info at kfmi.tv or www.kfmi.org.uk